Hello, welcome to Reso Coder, and let's talk about why frameworks, all of the different frameworks that there are, are actually only tools in your arsenal, and you should not get overly attached to any one of them because that is going to be really detrimental to your development career. Look, I know that I am not the oldest developer out there, but even in my short development career, which is like, what is it, three or four years now, actually, I've seen frameworks come and go, or actually more accurately, I've seen new frameworks pop up which replaced older frameworks. And now, if I would get attached to any one of those frameworks which are now kind of like obsolete, I would uh, be pretty much uh, hurt, right? Because that's not a good thing when you are your, your whole business is uh, standing upon one framework and that framework is going down you know, it's not a good place to be. For that reason, you need to stay agile, in not in the architecture software type of meaning, but agile in its regular meaning. Like you have to constantly be on your feet, trying to pivot, trying to do something else, trying to not undermine what you're doing currently, but keeping your eye, eyes open and your mind open for the most part. And uh, trying to see what are other possibilities if you could uh, do something differently if you could do something better. We can actually see this happening now because there is Flutter, there is native Android, there is native iOS, there is Xamarin, there is freaking Angular, there is Ionic, there is Vue.js, there is React, oh my gosh, you can do everything with everything, everything is good for everything, but you know, you should actually have some standards because uh, you probably don't want to write your Android app in Assembler. Although I am sure that you could definitely do something like that, but it would be painful, right? So you should always pick the best tool for your job and not get overly attached to any one of the frameworks. And what's happening now from my life, right? And from many developers' lives. I am, for example, attached to Android Kotlin. Or not attached, I am disattaching myself. But uh, I was kind of attached to it because I really like Android Kotlin. Now they are pushing out uh, like the Android Jetpack for software architecture. Nice, really nice libraries. I also have a separate tutorial on them, which you can check out from the link or from the card in the corner. I hope that I'm pointing to the proper corner. If not, I will point there, right? So yeah, there is Android native and it's good, but it has some flaws. It has some nice things. It has some bad things like, for example, the activity lifecycle, fragment lifecycle, all of the kind of stupid things that are in there are really not cool. And also the like passing stuff between fragments or activities. Now with the new libraries, it gets a bit better, but still it's not the best way to do things. Also, you have XML layouts and not code layouts. So yeah, you can use something like Enco, about which I have separate tutorial, which you can check out over here. But even Enco is it's not like a fix-it-all solution, right? Then you have iOS. I'm not an iOS developer, but I think that there are some flaws even there as well, because everywhere there are flaws, even in the newer frameworks. But what the newer frameworks are doing is that they look at the flaws of other frameworks, which they try to replace or actually even complement, not fully replace, and they uh, try to fix those flaws. And that's why they get popular, right? Right? And uh, if you are a web developer, you need to do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, right? All of those things you... And uh, you are not the most productive when you are writing in three separate files and all of that stuff, right? Because uh, HTML was uh, invented even before there was some kind of a interactive app. So HTML is not made to be working 100% properly with JavaScript. It's only like packed onto it, it's bandaged, and it's not really the, mo the primary use case for HTML, so to say, because HTML is uh, around here for the longest time, right? So it's not made to be used in a front end, uh, really high performance, reactive uh, interfaces, and all of that stuff, right? And what happens when you get attached to one particular framework is that, oh, 
there is something new, but I'm not going to try because this is the best way to do things. I'm not going to try if it works better than other thing. I'm going to do it the old way. And then the whole market slowly starts changing and you are still saying, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. I'm not going to change. But the market is still moving because it clearly sees, except for you, that uh, there is something rotten in the state of Denmark, so to say, right? They are moving over there to some other state, not of Denmark. But you are still in Denmark. And what are you doing in Denmark? Get out of there. And if you were intelligent enough to move with the crowd, and I'm not saying that you should always move with the crowd, but you should at least acknowledge that something is happening and uh, at least check it out. And if you like it, then go over there. If you don't like it, just say that the crowd is done and stay on your old, good old path of the framework which you were using before. But if the crowd is correct, which it can be, certainly, then uh, move with the crowd. Don't be always like anti-system kind of person because sometimes the system can be good, right? Again, take me as an example. I started off doing games because when you're a kid, you, all you want to do is make games, right? So I started with C Sharp and Unity. Then I knew C Sharp. Kind of knew C Sharp, not really. I would not say nowadays that I, back then, that I knew C Sharp, but I thought that I am pretty good with it. And uh, so I was making games in Unity and then I moved on to make mobile apps. But hey, I didn't want to learn a new language because new languages, to learn them is pretty rough, right? And actually, it's not really hard to learn new languages because if you apply proper principles and you can check out a video on proper principles in learning stuff from uh, this card over here. But uh, if you apply them, it's not really hard to learn something new because really all the languages are similar to each other. So yeah, you just spend a couple hours, maybe one week, not fully one week, but uh, like two hours every day of the week. and you are good to go with the new language or with the new framework if you are doing things properly. But anyway, I thought that I have to do something with C Sharp, so I learned Xamarin and I also made some tutorials on Xamarin, but Xamarin is not really good and I wasn't even doing Xamarin, uh, what is it called, Xamarin Forms, right? I was doing only Xamarin Android because, uh, yeah, I was building only for Android, so it was not really cool and then I moved over to Android with Kotlin because the Kotlin was the next, the new hot thing on Android and I learned that and it was really productive. It's really awesome. I still love Kotlin. I still make tutorials about it, but it's only Android, right? The only missing thing is that we are building only for Android and also we inherit all of the problems which are with Android. Although Kotlin tries to suppress some of the problems by providing nice helpers like extension functions and all of that, you still cannot uh, get rid of the fact that we are building for Android and we are only building Android apps. I know that there is Kotlin native, I know that. But let's be honest, Kotlin native, at least for now, is not usable. It's not usable because it's not taken off. It doesn't have, probably it doesn't have the backing, I don't know. It just, I think that it's not going to take off. If it takes off, I'm going to consider it very well. But for now, for the time being, Kotlin native, I don't think, I would not do some production apps in it, really. Like, it's, it's not all that good. And also, you have to build your UIs twice for Android, also for iOS, and also for web, if you are using Kotlin to JS bridge. And then there is Flutter. I started learning Flutter just a couple of weeks ago, but I am already not completely productive in it because there are some quirks and also I'm, I can write apps, I can write UIs pretty nicely, I can write simple apps, but I have to brush up on the architecture because the architecture is a bit different after all because it's not Android, it's not web development, it's something completely different because you have widgets and those widgets can, can, can contain logic and also the UI stuff like the layouts, you are not separating the code, you are writing only one code which can hold the layout and also the logic because it's all in Dart. So yeah, there are some quirks which I still need to sort out and you will need to if you learn Flutter, which I highly recommend. But uh, yeah, it's otherwise pretty cool. And I also, obviously, I had some prejudice about Dart and about Flutter because I was like, oh my gosh, this Dart thing, it's not good. There is no protected uh, 
thing like what is it modifier access modifier there's no protected access modifier you don't have actually any access modifiers you have only underscore before the variable or before the field to make it private and also it's not class private but it's package private and what is it what does that mean what is it all about I was already used to extension functions from Kotlin. You don't have them in Dart. I was used to apply and run and uh, let those higher order functions about which you can check a tutorial either from here or if there are not enough cards because I can only put five cards in there in each video. You can check it out from the link in the video description. So yeah, if uh, you, I cannot even use those, but I have something else, which is a cascading operator, but that is for a different video. But yeah, I was pretty upset that at least they didn't choose Kotlin but, uh, instead of Dart. But now I see that Dart is a perfect candidate for Flutter because otherwise, except for those things, it's, it's awesome. I like Dart. There are some things which Dart does better and there are some things which Kotlin does better. But you cannot choose a real winner here, although I would still lean more toward the Kotlin side of things. But uh, hey, we are not going to change the decision to use Dart and Flutter, so we should go with that. If you cannot change something, why get upset about it, right? You're not going to change it, so accept it and try to move forward and actually embrace the fact that it uses Dart and try to see things from the brighter side. And this is not just optimism, this is like realism. Like, you're not going to change it, so why get upset? Just do what, it's, what it takes to pull the performance from the Dart and pull the like speed of coding from Dart and don't complain. Alright, so that's really it. You should not get attached to frameworks because there are some benefits, there are some downsides. With Flutter Hummingbird you would be even able to build web apps, Android apps and uh, iOS apps from the same code base and with Kotlin you cannot do that. Yeah, you can have much better syntax with Kotlin when it comes to code, but you don't have better syntax with Kotlin because you have to write that syntax three times, even if if we are counting that we have already native Kotlin and uh, Kotlin to JS properly functioning and implemented and bug free, which is not the case for now. But even if we had all that, you would still need to write some things three times. And with Flutter and Hummingbird, you can write it just uh, one time for the most part, if you are not really doing some platform specific stuff, but it doesn't only apply to Flutter, it applies to also like, I don't know, what is it, like, uh, what was before Angular, I'm too young to remember, god damn it, but uh, yeah, if you w were doing something before Angular and Angular came about, yeah, switch to Angular or something else, right, I don't know, I don't know all of the frameworks, uh, but uh, yeah, it applies to everything, just try to evaluate what's better for you, what's not better, and then go up from there. And uh, I think that you will prosper as a developer because as a developer, you should simplify what is complex and uh, you can simplify what is complex even more with newer frameworks because that's why they are popping up. They are here to simplify our processes. All right, then that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a like and also share it. If you don't want to miss more videos like this, definitely subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you are going to know when new videos are published. Also, if you have anything to say, leave it in the comments. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and see you in the next video.